All right, today I'm working on the backhoe. Now I have a lot of stuff I want to do to it, but right now the important part is this hydraulic cylinder. The seal on it's leaking really bad. I did a video before on rebuilding these, but it's kind of a crappy video, and I know I can explain it a lot better. But we're gonna do the hydraulic cylinder of this, and we're also gonna do one on the Bobcat, and we'll go to that one next. But the reason that, well they're both leaking, so they both need fixed. But they're actually different designs inside, and, and you'll see. So the rebuild process is, is slightly different on them as far as what parts have to go into and rebuild them. And I'm sure there's different ones out there with different equipment. Uh, but these are the most two most common that you're going to see. So whatever you're working on, it's going to pretty much be the same process. Whether it says Bobcat or Case or John Deere or whatever, it's all the same. Alright, the first thing we're going to do is... We're going to relieve some pressure here. We're going to take these hydraulic lines off. They're going to be in the way anyway. Oops. <laughs> now you're going to lose some fluid doing this job. That's just all to it. Some people believe in catch pans. I'm just going to leave it at that. That wasn't supposed to happen. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. So everything's a little bit gunked up, so the swivels don't want to spin too well. And that's why I had to go grab another adjustable there. That might be enough to relieve the pressure. I don't know if I take this fitting off any more than that. All right, now comes the part. This is gonna be the worst part of it. I forgot a step. Dag nab it, now I gotta go find a flat screwdriver. All right, something you don't wanna overlook. There's a screw here. That screwdriver is too small. These suck. Oh, that one turned out easy. Wow, we got lucky. This screw keeps this in place here. This gland nut. So what I want to do before I take any part of the cylinder off, which eventually has to be done, is I want to loosen this gland nut. Because right now it's in a sturdy position. I have something where I can actually put some pressure on it. So we're at least going to get it loose. They're kind of a fun. So what I'm doing here is these little pins sticking these little holes on the underside here. This is a pain in the butt because everything moves. See, everything has to move on you. It's sliding off again. Did it move? But, oh yeah. All right, see how easy that moved? That's what you want. Sometimes these things get really jammed up and they are nasty. I'm gonna go online and see different setups for these gland nut wrenches to see if they make a better one, because this one is Kind of a pain. I paid 35 bucks for this. Now I'll link the, in the description for this. So what a lot of guys do is they don't have the proper tools for this and they'll end up trying to chisel this around and they break up this gland nut. I mean they bust it all out and put nasty marks in. And you know what? I guess it's all right to do, but how many times are you gonna do that? You know, this machine's from 1976. So how old is this machine? 40 years old? Yeah, this machine's 40 years old. So, I guarantee it's not the first time this is being rebuilt. And I plan to keep this machine for a long time. So, I don't really, you know, I don't really want to bang these up for no reason. 
The only same thing you use is a catch bucket. Dirt looks pretty good. Yeah, we're right here at my well, so it kind of sucks. Oh, it's 200 feet down there. <laughs> Doubt it. Probably. Whatever. Oh, I, you know what? Everything was already leaked out. <laughs> That's how bad that seal was. Everybody thinks I'm talking to the camera. I'm actually here teaching Donald. He's a new mechanic. I see a lot of potential in him. No, Donald's not allowed to touch the back hill. No. <laughs> One little thing happened. Ow. My ears. So it's extremely loud, it rings your ears, so it's good to have uh, some kind of hearing protection. I mean, it literally hurt my ears. My hearing's not very good, because I'm an idiot, and I don't ever wear hearing protection, especially like, when the range. All right, we're gonna try something here. These are some sockets, Pittsburgh sockets, they're junk. I mean, they still work, but they're... I have better sockets, these are just backups. Donald's gonna hold that there. And then, Donald, you wanna come where I'm at, actually. There we go. Let go. Oh. Good enough. That's that does it. I love you all flip that backwards. Oh yeah. Flip that. All right. Now this just pulls right out. <laughs> You didn't see this truck yet in my vlog. This is like a really big project. It wasn't supposed to be, but now it is. And uh, it'll be a while until that video is ready. It turned out to be a pretty big project, I think. Pretty awesome project. We're gonna find out how good the how good you love this bumper on. All right, we were just getting set up on this, and it already wasn't working. It's was just bending the bumper, not breaking the weld, but definitely bent the bumper down some. And it kind of sucks because I just built the thing, it's not even done yet. But it's a work truck, so it's going to happen. So I'm going to go back to the only other way that I know. And uh, I'm going to have the machine do the work. All right, we got to come along, kind of hold this whole thing back here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to rehook up the hydraulics to it. And 
use the machine to do the work. And I don't like doing it this way because I know it's not the right way to do it, but it's the only way that I have to do it. Because if it bent that bumper trying to pull this out, we never would have got it then. Machine, the battery terminal is kind of messed up. It's kind of hard to start sometimes. Donald, why don't you get over there? He's gonna make a mess. Can't get my hands dirty. Yeah, here you go, this game again. Told you to make a mess. That's yeah. Really don't want to do it that way. Ugh, falling over. Don't, I can't put them on YouTube. Donald's saying naughty things. So this is the cylinder. This is a really small one. So it's kind of odd to me to be working on something this small. To be honest with you. That's, that's what she said. <laughs> Maybe I'll, you know what, I need to empty my uh, ash pan out in my coal stove. Maybe I'll throw it on top of that mess there to save that up quick. It's actually a really good idea, Chedley. Donald's learning with you guys. Well, he's learning a little bit ahead of you guys, but he's learned too. But Donald doesn't want to fix nothing, so. <laughs> I don't blame him. Yeah. Donald has a lot of great qualities, though, ladies. <laughs> Donald does, Donald raises cows, if anybody doesn't know. And it is the best grass-fed beef I've ever had. I buy half a cow off him a year now. And uh, I bought this half a cow, and I'm like, there's no way I'm going to eat that, and I'm running out. So, by end of summer, I'll be ready for another one. But his cows are the best. Donald's going to be a farmer. He's working on buying a farm right now, so we're trying to get him there. Maybe I can start a GoFundMe. You guys want to buy Donald a farm? I can start a GoFundMe for Donald's farm. And then uh, that'll give me work because then I can work on all his tractors. We're going to buy Donald a real nice ancient tractor from like the 50s. Something really cool. That should suck her up real nice. That's how that's done. Alright, um, what I do is I just repin the cylinder in here. That way it gives me a steady spot to work here. And then there's a nut on top of here. That one was pretty easy to do. This nut screws out. And this comes apart. And then this comes into pieces. This is a spacer. And then you got more spacers and V-packing. So the V-packing, I might have to grab my picks to pull this apart. Nope. The only part that you're replacing is this one right here. This is a cloth. That's your V-pack. Now this ain't leaking. So I could probably just put it back on and be fine. But since I have it apart and did the work and they're only a couple bucks, I'm going to go ahead and replace that. And the gland nut comes off, and there's a sweeper seal, there's a sweeper seal, main seal, and then a guide in there. And those guides are sometimes hard to get, so I'll reuse them if I have to. This is just nasty, nasty. It's been, the sweeper's going bad, because it's starting to pull a bunch of junk in there. So it's a good thing I got to this, because that will destroy a cylinder. But uh, yeah, we're going to have to go get some parts for that, I guess. All right, here we are on the workbench, a.k.a. the hood of one of my trucks out here. There's that sweeper seal. I was looking around the garage, and I think I found some of the, the V-packs I need for, that cil for this case cylinder. But to be honest with you, I'm making the trip down the town anyway. <clears throat> Since I won't have this sweeper or this O-ring, I'm just going to get all new. Uh, it looks about the same, but I don't know why I'd mess with it. Just to get it done right. 
All right, there's that O-ring. All right, here's our V-packs. Um, the other one had like some cloth and some plastic, but that the hydraulic shop that told me this is the way to go. I already had some brand new of these end caps and this new spacer. So that saved me a little bit. These pieces go right on here. Or should go right on here. Yeah. to get them over that lip or else when you get to tighten all this you're just gonna pinch them all right so that's the back side of it now for the gland nut all right so you got a seal sweeper seal and an o-ring for this and this is supposed to go down this way from what I understand So make sure you don't have any old pieces in there, which I don't. All right. If I can get that to bend. Hold on. All right, those things are pretty tough. I mean, it looked like I was putting way too much pressure on them, but I mean, I didn't mark that thing up or nothing. It's just, it's that tight, which is good. You need to be tight. Um, next. Let me put in the sweeper seal. Uh, look, got a little bit marked up in there. Taking that casing out, that's all right. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. There ain't much to that. Uh, let me move the camera here. All right, apologize for the shadows here. Sweeper seal, board. And the sweeper seal's on. Gotta go around that little bit of that steel casing on there. Uh, so that's. That's good to go. That ain't moving anywhere. Is this the new O-ring? This is the new O-ring. There ain't much to that. It just... There we go. New O-ring's on. So we can put our cylinder back together now. Alright, this is pretty simple. Slide the gland nut on. Now it's probably not going to... Just slide right off like it slid right, slide right on like it slid right off. Gotta work it a little bit to get it past that sweeper. Oh yeah, look at that. That's nice. Alright, for the V-pack, you got this side and this side. This side's much deeper as the shallow side. The deep side goes on there because that actually hugs right around the cylinder. Oh, that's beautiful. All right, let me grab a socket.
tight, tight is tight, you know. I guess I'm going a little backwards and make this harder on myself than it needs to be. Yep, tight is tight on that. See, I gotta clean this clean nut up. Hold on. There we go. That worked out pretty dang well. You can just about see that set screw now. Yeah, it did. Keep that from moving. Your equipment, there's gonna be a grease fitting. And so, what you want to do is turn this appropriately. But I'm still gonna turn this anyway because there's a little notch out here that needs to go to the bottom. You have options here. You either smack this into place, provided you have the room to smack it, which I don't, or you can use the machine. That's what we're going to do.
So my issue was, I thought physics has it, so this thing can't fall when I take that out. Well, my physics were wrong. It did start to fall, so now we're just relying on this thing here. That ratchet, oh, I'm holding that in there. So they make these bars that you put in here so that this doesn't happen, but I don't have one. All right, let me uh, think about this for a second here. leaking the whole time. You loosened it up, so I think you should be able to pull out your thing with it now. Alright. Yeah, I know, but like... I'm just saying, I thought of these things before we took it out, and then... What are we doing here, Donald? Now you ask. It's rolling the skid steer. Oh, cylinder's out. And that's how that's done. <laughs> and oh, a skid steer sliding on the ice. That's why that's not working, Donald. I screwed this one up. <laughs> Look, I'm going at this blind. I didn't research this. I didn't. YouTube this. I'm just like, all right, cool. It needs rebuilt. Let's rebuild it. I'm a kind of guy that gets her done, and I might not always have the tools that I need, but I get her done the best that I can. Uh, what happened is, once that cylinder came out, it skidded the whole thing forward on that ice and snow. So I got a board under there now, and it's actually hooked to attach a jack underneath there, and uh, so that's kind of going to safe fall. It can't fall anymore. The one thing is, it kind of pinned. The cylinder here it pinned this rod to the to the tube a little bit, and what happened was it kind of messed that plastic up a little bit. But honestly, that's not even what's that's not even the seal. So I don't even think that is an issue at all because ninety five percent of it's untouched. So it's just a little bit it's gonna be a little bit scored there. Um, there is the potential that I could have ovaled. The, the cylinder or bent this rod, but I really don't think that much weight went onto it to do that damage. At this point, what I'm going to do is I'm going to replace it, or I'm going to fix it, put it back in before I go replace that whole cylinder. You know, mis mistakes, they do happen. I go about it the best way that I can, use what I have. I had my safety glasses on. I will say that. That's more than I normally have one. Donald tried giving me a Kevlar helmet, but I said, if that thing falls, Kevlar helmet ain't stopping it. I guess I'm going to put all this on YouTube. <laughs> I was about cutting some of it because of the safety factor. But I'll just take the flak and say I messed up and I know I messed up. And it happens. I don't know. It, it is what it is now. Make do with what you got. You okay, so when you called me a before we started this. <laughs> no, I'll be edited out. <laughs> Maybe just beeped out. <laughs> Probably just beeped out because it's kind of funny. Donald kept telling me that things going to collapse and I didn't think it would. It did. <laughs> so. That's a little bit tighter than I thought it was going to be. Alright, so it's been about a week, week and a half. And uh, got the parts in for the Bobcat. Now you can order them from Bobcat. 
they're expensive, or you can go on Amazon, write down the part numbers. To get this piece off the back of that uh, of the rod there, I ended up having to use heat and a really big air gun for that. I don't know why it was that tight. But it's alright, we got a new nut with the kit. So we're just going to start taking off these seals. And this is all the same concept of the last one, just might have it set up a bit different. And then the worst part is the actual seal itself down in here. But it should be brittle enough. Oh yeah. And there it goes. That just pulls right out. Alright, so we're on well, that case cylinder we had V pack stacked up in there. This works differently. This is your low pressure on this side, and then your high pressure is this this one right here in the middle. I'm really not sure why they do it that way, but that's how it's done. So these are non-separable. This is a, this is pretty sure this is one unit. And there's another small O-ring down in there. What happened was through disassembly, heating it, everything, this thing got really beat up. Now, we're going to do it again. be a much different method. Uh, so I was going to order a brand new one. But it turns out they're only 80 bucks through Bobcat, and I can't find them anywhere cheaper online. So I think what's going to happen is I'm just going to roll with it. All right. Well, I guess the easiest part to do is this is called the piston, which is that bottom, the bottom of the rod. So we're going to throw that O-ring in there. And then our high pressure. Takes quite a bit of stretching, apparently. Hmm. <laughs> All right, this just fires in the hole. Just like the last clan nut we did. This was the difficult part. That made that a lot easier to do. All right. Large o ring. This is a little bit different. This one actually, there's a lip in there that sits in. It doesn't just get pounded in like the other one. Just like that.
This here, this is the wrong tool for the job. But it's what I got available. That vise is obviously gonna fall down as soon as I put pressure on this. But I'm hoping the ground will provide enough. Sorry. Not just a little bit. See, that's good enough for me. I can already tell you this part's gonna suck. Cause I don't know. I'm a master of hitting the wrong button on the camera. So what I did was I loosened the top here, let the fluid pressure off, let me block of wood, I put it on there, being mindful that's not touching this piston at any point, so you don't want to score that. And then the hammer, and then just smack it down. We're at a point now where the piston on the end of the rod is down past this hole. So if it's down past that hole, the pressure's from here down. And to crack those lines is gonna be difficult to get to, and it's going to lose a lot of fluid. So what I want to do is I'm going to put a battery back in the machine, had it over there charging. And I'm going to start the machine and try to suck that piston down. And we'll lose a little bit of fluid at the top here, but not enough to make it matter. I'm probably going to regret all this. a little messed up on it. That's where it stops. Alright, I really don't know. I really don't know how these threads got messed up in here, but they did. And I think what it was when I had it down the whole way, I hit with the hammer, try to get the seat a little bit, get this O-ring to seat in here. So um, I'm about to file that down and mess with it, see what I can do. I might have a buddy that has a three inch uh, die for this, but it kind of sucks because it's already on the machine now. What I did was I used this file here, and I cleaned up the threads. This piece of aluminum is part of steel. So these are the threads that are messed up. So I just cut the threads back with the file or the bad spots. And they still don't want to go on. And this, just spray all the metal out with all the little shavings. And then lastly, I used a pick and I might have 
put it back now. But here's a pit because there's pieces of the aluminum where it's stripped off stuck in these steel threads. And that's pretty much what's stopping the whole thing. I probably could have just pulled those pieces out and been good, but uh, I wanted to be sure. So it's still a little tight going on. Oop, just about there. <sighs> Folks, that's it. It's fixed. Alright, so we just watched this bubble, and when that little ball goes up in this glass right here, it should be about the middle, and we know we have enough hydraulic fluid in there. So, we did lose quite a bit, so we'll see how much we put in. Hopefully it ain't too bad. Alright, so that went up pretty quick. Be sure to like, share, comment, subscribe, whatever. All of that nonsense. Now you know how to build two different types of hydraulic cylinders. One went really smooth, and the one, which was the Bobcat, did not go as smooth. Uh, that was my first time tearing apart anything on that Bobcat as far as the hydraulics go, so I learned a good deal about it. And I think the next one will be, go much smoother, much easier. And I also have the parts waiting on me so I can just like take it apart, put it back together in one day. What I really need is a, is a full shop to do a lot of this work. So I'm out here, out in the weather, in the dirt, there's ice, there's snow, whatever. And that's what makes a lot of this really difficult. But you got to be able to work with what you got. And I have a feeling, I have a really good feeling, there's a garage coming soon.